Alright, tricks and triggers. Time for the penultimate episode of View of the Day with the High Ground. The crew of the Enterprise is sent on a mercy mission to deliver medical to deliver medical supplies to the war torn non affiliated planet planet Rutia four in the middle of a decades long conflict with rebel separatists called the Ansada. The Enterprise crew cannot intervene with the conflict itself and travels to the planet because to do so would violate the Prime Directive. While Chief Medical Officer Dr. Crusher, Commander Data, and Lieutenant Worf relax in a cafe, a bomb goes off in a public plaza, injuring many bystanders. Picard attempts to the wounded bodies against Captain Picard's suggestion to return to the ship, but her efforts are interrupted when she is abducted by a man using an unknown method of teleportation. After being denied the use of the Enterprise's superior firepower to seek and destroy the Ansada's base of operations, Alexana Devos, the head of routine security, orders severe interrogation of all known Ansada sympathizers, an act, an act that, the, that the Enterprise crew find immoral. Without new information from Devos, the, from Devos, the Enterprise crew investigate the teleportation technology and find that it is used to shift between dimensions allowing the Insider Rebels to surpass even force fields. The investigative team, which includes Wesley, lets Picard know that they need to observe more of the teleportations to be able to pinpoint the location of the base. At the Insider base, Crusher learns that her abductor is Kyrol Finn, the leader of Insada. Crusher refuses to eat or otherwise cooperate with Finn. After several hours, Finn lets Crusher out of her restraints and requests that she help treat their wounded. Crusher discovers that the inverters, the Ansada teleportation technology, causes irreversible damage to the user's DNA, and that many of Ansada's sick are due to excessive use of the inverter. Finn admits that the inverter is their only advantage against a routine government. After more hours pass, Finn believes that the Federation, by providing medical aid, is working with the routine government and launches an attack on the Enterprise, despite Crusher's request to avoid harming her son. The Asada managed to plant a bomb on the Enterprise warp engine. It's quickly transported into space by the forge, but the distraction is enough to allow Finn to appear on the bridge and abduct Captain Picard. With Picard as his, as his captive, Finn uses the inverter to come to Counselor Troy and the Enterprise and demand the Federation become involved in mediating the dispute, returning to the planet before a security can arrive. Picard, learning of Crusher's situation, Tells her to continue to work on gaining Finn's confidence to hopefully end the dispute peacefully. Data and Wesley are able to use Finn's appearance to locate the Insada base, and Commander Riker and DeVos assemble their forces. After they transport it into the base, the combined forces are quickly able to quell the resistance. Finn, as a last resort, attempts to execute Picard, but DeVos kills him. It is their conclusion that if Finn remained alive, his imprisonment would spark more resistance but being killed in battle will only elevate him to martyr status and reduce the violence in the short term. When a young Asada member attempts to exact revenge and jump a card, Crusher is able to convince him to drop his weapon, which Riker notes is a sign that there may be more fruitful discussions to resolve the issue in the future. Yeah, let's hope so. So anyway, let's, let's look at a bit of censorship regarding this episode. In a study of terrorism, Data notes that Ireland was unified in 2024. As a result, this episode was not originally shown by the BBC in the United Kingdom for many years. It was not broadcast in the Republic of Ireland by the Star Trek rights by the Star Trek rights holder RTE during the program's run on that channel. The UK broadcasts were received there. <coughs> Initial UK airings were edited when shown on satellite channel Sky One. <coughs> the episode was broadcast unedited in May 2006 on Sky One, and finally shown unedited on BBC Two during the third season's repeats after midnight in September 2007. Huh, that's kind of interesting. So overall, I say this episode was kind of good, I guess you could say, but I don't know if I call it one of the best. So overall, I give The High Ground three warp cores out of five. Well, join me soon as we take a look at the, as we take a look at the return of Q again in Deja Q. So, until then... Live long and prosper, everybody.